a silly season. And welcome to, I suppose, the Christmas special of um, the Inventors Laser Lab. Um, so today what we're going to do, we're going to do a, a Christmas scene. Uh, we're going to etch it into wood. Um, now we're going to do two different scenes. Now this particular one has been dithered. I've taken this, um, this photograph or picture um, I've taken it off the internet straight out of Google and put it into uh, Photoshop and I have dithered this picture to, uh, first of all it was, it was colour so I changed it to grayscale, black and white and then I changed it to a bitmap dithered high resolution this is uh, 600 dots per 600 dots per inch for DPI. Now, this one, uh, again, it was a colored picture and I've changed it to grayscale and I've saved it as a high resolution black and white picture. Now, what we're going to do uh, in this session is to find out What's the difference? What what the laser is going to do, and what the difference is, uh, and the end product is going to be between a dithered picture and a grayscale picture. And this is just light etching. Uh, it's not 3D carbon at all. Um, that is something totally different. So that's where, what we're going to do. Um, I'd also like to answer one question which uh, a number of you have wrote in and, and asked me um, regarding, I think, the, the last video where I showed you that, um, that grayscale or dithered swash or test card that I cut and in the deepest black square uh, a number of you have said to me that um, the lines, the hair lines that you could see were a lot smaller than the dot size of or the, the, the laser beam size of 0.2 millimeters. Um, well, I'll show you why that is uh, just very quickly. Now, this is the shape. I'll make it a bit bigger, but it comes pixely. This is the actual shape of the laser beam itself. It's not a square beam on the, on the end. This is what is called a Gaussian shape. Um, so where you see the dark red in the top here, this is the hottest and most concentrated energy of the beam. And of course it goes uh, it lessens then or decreases as the beam size sort of tails out. The actual beam diameter is it's 0 0.2 millimeters from here to here. So as the beam is traveling at 400 millimeters per second, it is only really using this end cone part of the beam. Now this could be as little as 0 0.01 or less uh, because this is 0 0.2. 
Uh, so, you know, I, I can't tell you exactly, but I'll see if I can get the exact information. So, it will act just like, a, I, I suppose, a, you know, sort of a, a very sharp needle. So that is the, the, the rough explanation. Uh, the, the laser beam doesn't get time to, to, to go in deep and use a wider part of the beam. So um, we'll look at that in detail uh, in other videos later down the track. We don't want to go too deep and too technical into, into that. Okay, so I put the picture into uh, laser cut and it looks a bit, it looks as though it's snowing very hard. Um, I, it'd be interesting to see actually how this comes out. So I've just sized the picture, uh, which I think by now you, you all know how to do that. Um, so what I want to do now is just get a square um, and just come to about here and bring it down to approximately, don't have to be exact with this. And we're gonna put that on a blue layer. So why, why we put it onto different layers is because we, we need to set the, the laser um, power and feed rate at different levels, uh, plus it's two different jobs. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to do about that now. So over here, we're going to do the black layer, which is the actual dithered picture. So we're going to say we want to engrave that. Now we want to check the settings. Now this should be fine for wood uh, because we want to not exactly just etch it away. Uh, with this laser, uh, I'm finding that um, it will remove wood then, the top layer of wood, and it won't leave a burn behind. Uh, it, it just doesn't, um, it doesn't leave black material behind at the lower setting. So you have to raise the settings up and uh, get it hotter. <laughs> a stronger beam to be able to uh, make it go brown so at this level it should be fine uh, 400 I suppose I could slow the feed rate down as well to, to, to achieve that but you know it's all about uh, getting the job done as efficiently as you can and that's where this machine comes in so we're gonna press OK and let that calculate which will, it's done. Now the cut layer. Now I've actually forgotten what the setting should be. So actually what I did, and I keep these handy here. Uh, this particular um, plywood, what I did, I, I cut out quite a number, about 10, uh, different squares at different power levels and you'll see well this is burnt black and they get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter all the way up to here and I wrote on each one what the settings were now I'll take the extremes okay so there we go this darkened one uh, this one here and you can see it's, you know, sort of overburn on the back as well. It's really, really too hot. So it was six millimeters a second, and it was 85 percent, which is 100 watts. Um, and it was 11 millimeters off the surface. Uh, I was actually trying different, um, uh, different sort of distances as well, uh, getting it in focus. I was doing it manually. Uh, and this one here, it's a good cut. You can actually see the, the wood, it's slightly, it's always gonna be slightly darker than the original wood. And uh, 24 millimeters a second and 85 and 9.5, which is the exact right uh, distance off the, um, 
off the uh, material. So that's how I found, you know, where to go with it. So now we will set that. Um, I don't. I want to make sure that it does go through, uh, and I was getting good success at actually 22. 22, um, 90, and we're going to put 85 here, 85, 85, blow in, and we're going to press OK. And now I'm going to send that to the machine. that it is actually like a photograph in wood um, and I think you can detect the lack of burning now that is I suppose a nice problem to have uh, with this machine Now, see if we can get the light right here for you guys to see. Okay, so there it is. I've given it a, a scrub with a brush and the water, dried it off, and that's the uh, end result. Um, what I'm discovering more and more is it's not entirely um, the setting up of the program or even creating the picture. That's only part of it. The other part of achieving a good result is the quality of the machine. You just won't achieve this type of result. I mean, you can see it's it's actually made nearly a 3D image of it. It's a very, very light 3D. And what it's actually done, and this is plywood, and that's another thing too. Look, look at the quality of, of cut. What it's actually done, it's etched away the top light colored layer, that layer there, to reveal the darker layer underneath without burning. That's the quality of the machine. It's a professional machine. Okay, so that's the dithered image. Uh, do you know, I don't think I'm even going to bother with the grayscale because this is proving to me that for this type of work um, 
there's no need to go to grayscale unless you want a deep 3D where the grayscale image is actually a three-dimensional scanned image it's not created in any program as such well I'm really pleased with that um, so what I'm actually going to do now I've decided is going to make a little Christmas decoration uh, possibly a Christmas card we'll uh, we'll just have to see when we um, when we fire the machine up next Thank you. 